What is up, my friends? Hope you're all having an absolutely riveting Tuesday. And yes, it is finally time. I have teased this on Twitter for long enough, and it is finally time. Almost a year into the channel's existence, it is time to play some college football. Now, I know that this is not normally the type of game that we play here on Lone Cell Gaming. We don't usually do a lot of sports games, but this is something that I've wanted to do for a really long time. I am super excited about jumping into this. I put up a poll a few weeks ago on Twitter asking, hey, pick me my team, pick me my dynasty team, and we are gonna start to try to make that school as good as we can before we move on to the next school. And obviously the main, the, the end goal is to uh, coach, be the head coach that is, at Penn State because that's my alma mater and that's where I want to where I want to end my career but we put out a poll gave you some of the worst teams in the game and as you can see uh, by the old school logo we are going to be the offensive coordinator for the Akron Zips they ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine but you just can't get into it because they would never understand all right so let's jump right into it we created uh, my coach Coach Tyler Zuli. He is going to be the offensive coordinator for the Akron Zips. Uh, when I looked at the overall, they were a 61, I believe, offensively. Uh, I think that's like the second or third worst offense in the game. Um, so this is going to be a little bit of a challenge, especially considering the fact that I am only the offensive coordinator. I can't control what the defense does. I can recruit defense to make the defense better. But if the defense is giving up points... We're going to have to match it, and I don't know if we can with how bad this offense is. So what we have not done is design our schedule, set up a recruiting board. Uh, we could take a look at red-shirting players, but quite honestly, I don't know if we're going to have the ability to because this team is so bad. I don't know if there's anybody that, like if we have a 40 overall player, I'm not going to red-shirt the kid because I don't really want him on my roster, so I'm going to let him play a year of eligibility, even if he doesn't technically play, to eventually be able to make room for some better players on this roster. Now, over the last few seasons, uh, I was looking at, you know, how at the beginning of every team, for those of you familiar with this game, when you sign a contract with the team, it gives you the, the team's last five or six seasons. Now, in 2000, I guess, 10, 11, and 12, Akron won a combined three games. They were 1-11 and 11 in each of the, the last three seasons. So my goal for this particular uh, season and this year one of this dynasty is, I mean, if we can go six and six, that would be huge. That would be huge for recruiting purposes because I guarantee you when we go into the setup recruiting board, which we'll do right now, uh, we're not going to create a prospect. We'll skip to recruiting. When we go into this recruiting board, I will guarantee you that Akron has no pipeline states. I would bet you even Ohio is not a pipeline state. Because there's just way too many colleges and schools within Ohio that are substantially better. I mean, you don't even have to talk about Ohio State or Cincinnati. I mean, Miami of Ohio is better. Um, you know, there are just a, a ton of Ohio University <laughs> is better. I would bet you the prospects that are interested in playing for us are probably a pretty small list. Now, before we get started, if you would not mind, as we always ask, just hit that subscription and bell notification. So that way you can get all of the latest and greatest news from all of us here at Lone Cell Gaming. Uh, what our goal for the 2021 calendar year is to hit 100 subscribers by the end of 2021. We're just about halfway there, so if you would not mind helping us out, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, let's jump into this and see if there are any players that are even remotely interested in joining our team. Now, this is actually kind of shocking. If I can get a bunch of three-star recruits to come play at Akron, that is a huge step in the right direction. So anybody that is a three-star recruit that has any interest in playing for our university is immediately going to be put on our uh, target prospect list. In fact, I'll probably even take a two-star wide receiver because I can I can make that work. We'll move down. We'll see. Let's see if there's any three stars who want to be second. And that's this is I mean this is an okay list. I'm actually kind of surprised that there are this many. Um, three-star recruits that want to come play for the school. Now, with offensive line in this game, you kind of never know. Some, of the, I think a lot of times you get guys that are like either 
unbelievably good or they're just totally busts right away. That's why I try to recruit as many offensive line and wide receiver, I think, to the same the, the same kind of extent. I try to recruit as many of them as I possibly can because there's there's no telling how good or bad uh, a particular offensive line is gonna offensive lineman is gonna be until you start recruiting them. Like I mean, this says 62. He could be a 73. He could be a 49. I mean, it's not we're not gonna know until we we actually start recruiting. Now, I did not show you guys. We set up uh, my offense. The way that my offense is set up, it's predicated on the Clemson offense. It's going to be a lot of pistol, a lot of read option, a lot of quick stuff. Um, get the ball out of the quarterback's hands quickly. Uh, I run the ball a ton. So if, if you're not a fan of the run game, I'm sorry. Um, but we run the ball a ton uh, in my my games. And it's a lot of read option and a lot of stuff like that. So hopefully we can get a quarterback who can you know, kind of move a little bit, who's also able to throw the ball a little bit. Um, we're going to take a look at that in a second. I mean, I need somebody who can, I need somebody, I don't need necessarily a quote scrambler, but I do need somebody who, who has the ability to move a little bit. Like these guys with these 540 times, it's just not, that's not enough for me. And obviously these five-star recruits aren't going to come play for me. Um, but let's just find a quarterback with the fastest uh, 40 time. Again, somebody that maybe I could recruit. This guy, he's a Juco quarterback. Seems like maybe a good option to put on the board. I know he's a one-star. Um, this guy's probably out of our recruiting range, I would think. I doubt Arizona's going to want to come play for us. I'm trying to find a state that's remotely close to Ohio or somebody in Ohio. Obviously, he probably won't come play for us, but we'll give it a shot and see what happens. All right, we'll put 27 guys on the recruiting board. Because I do want to try to get into uh, a little bit more of this, the game itself, and try to at least get one game played in this uh, first episode. So I think the next step, like I said, we're not going to redshirt anybody unless somebody absolutely needs to be redshirted at a position where there's like four or five guys that I can trust. I doubt that we're going to redshirt anybody. We'll give it a shot. Let's see. Um, I believe the guys in yellow are the, yes, so the guys in yellow are the ones that have the ability to be redshirted. Anybody, obviously, with RS next to their name um, has already been redshirted, and I can't do that. Uh, one one rule that I have, by the way, I don't redshirt offensive linemen. Uh, I, I feel like I need as many offensive linemen as I possibly can, so I do not redshirt offensive linemen. Yeah, I mean, there's really nobody on this 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 grouping that I would consider. I mean, the, the receiving core stinks. The tight ends stink. And that's a decent left tackle. That is not good. We need guard play seriously. Um, yeah, we really need guard play. I think probably what we're going to do is this backup center, although he's a 57 too, might play right guard, but I don't know if it really even matters. Yeah, I, I don't think we're going to redshirt anybody. There's nobody on this roster that's worth redshirting. So let's go to the custom schedule. Now, one thing that I always try to do now you're going to see the strength of schedule is an F, primarily because of the fact that we play in the MAC. The MAC's not very strong. Um, you know, you got a couple of games that are like UMass's schedule. That's a, a non-conference game. I'll show you what I did with the conferences in a second. I, I kind of rearranged some stuff, obviously, be, to, to kind of match what is, you know, real life. But we're going to take, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take UMass off the schedule. I have no interest in playing them. We're going to find a team that is at least a little bit better. I think it would be foolish to schedule, you know, Georgia or Notre Dame at this point in the season, but like even scheduling, let's just find, I mean, there's not a whole lot to choose from here. Maybe, maybe what we'll do is we'll make this an open date and then we'll go to week three and we'll, no, actually, you know what? I need these these later games to recruit to get guys to come onto campus. So let's try this one instead. You think that um, you think I could get a team like North Carolina to come play <laughs> at Akron? <laughs> what about Ole Miss? You know what? Let's schedule Ole Miss. We'll have we'll have uh, we'll go to Ole Miss. We'll go play them there. Um, so our options are Lafayette and UCF. That doesn't really excite me too much. I want a game that, that is, is kind of, I guess, challenging to begin the, the season. 
UCF is, it, I, you know, and, and the funny thing is too, I think that this might be that Blake Bortles, Storm Johnson team. Uh, so they're probably pretty good, but I would imagine that when this game came out, it was preseason rankings. So I would doubt that they're a, as good as they ended up being. So I want to try to find a team that's a little bit more challenging. Why don't we schedule? So what I'm what I'm looking for is a ranked team that is actually not as good as their ranking indicates. Like for example, playing UCLA might not be a bad idea. Like they're ranked 20th. They're not a terrible team, or they're not a, a, a terrible team. So it'll help my strength of schedule a little bit. And just by, as you can see, taking UMass off the strength of schedule moved it from an F to a C minus. Why don't we go to, Acre, or to to UCLA to start the year? Then we'll have UL Lafayette come to us. That, that seems to be a fair enough schedule. I mean, there's no reason to make it harder than it needs to be, considering the fact that we stink. Like, we are absolutely terrible. So I think that we're going to lock this schedule in. And that'll be, uh, that'll be our 2013 season. So we'll go play UCLA. We'll have UL Lafayette come to us, and then we'll go play Ole Miss uh, later in the season. So let's start the year. Let's get this thing started. And if you wouldn't mind, by the way, while this thing is loading, um, if you could go find us on social media, you can, of course, find myself at Tyler Zuli. You can find the channel at Lone Cell Gaming. It's the same as the channel on YouTube's name. You can find Brandon at Easy Mode Earls. Um, and again, like I said, our goal for this um, this calendar year is to hit 100 subscribers. So if we're able to hit that that mark, we would be extremely grateful. Now, I will say this. Before we get started, I want to uh, put out a little disclaimer. Um, this is a probably 10 or 12-year-old PlayStation 3 that we're playing this game on. So if for any reason it freezes, it crashes, it may happen. So I will do my best to kind of pivot from that, and we'll we'll do our best to kind of have a little bit of a jump cut. Brandon does a tremendous job at editing these things, so I would imagine that he's probably pretty prepared for that to happen as well. We've kept the system in pretty good condition, but it is still a decade-old system, so we'll see what happens. I also forgot how unbelievably slow the preseason and off-season are in this game, like how long it takes to advance through some things all right so what we're gonna do because we've already kind of talked for 13 minutes and, and haven't had a whole lot of play is we are gonna go play this game and then we'll do our recruiting as you can tell the bar is heavily in UCLA's favor I don't expect to win this game um, I in fact I expect to probably get beaten pretty pretty handedly but we'll see what happens maybe we can control some clock keep the tempo way down, run the time, and you know maybe we could pull one of those Appalachian State, Michigan State type upsets. And it's funny too because a team like Appalachian State's not even in this game, and now they're not even an upset team anymore. I mean, they, they've consistently been really good in the, uh, the Sun Belt over the last couple of seasons. Yeah, that doesn't excite me. 87 defense versus my 61 offense. We're only 23 points worse. What's their defense look like? Uh, they've got a 91 outside linebacker. What I love about playing these games, especially when you have some of the better players, you know, and some of the better teams, is going back and finding, uh, figure, rem like remembering who's who. Uh, and I'm not quite sure why my coach got glasses and a hat all of a sudden, because when I made the coach, he had neither. Uh, so we'll see. By the way, if you don't hear any play-by-play um, -play or color commentary, that is because I turned them off. Um, I wasn't quite sure if legally I was allowed to have them in there. So just to be safe uh, and not get copyright striked, um, we will have no play-by-play. -play. So we'll see how this goes. This might go well. It might go poorly. We're going to need to do everything we can to stay in front of them. So we will receive and take the kick and hopefully, you know, maybe hold on to possession for a while. Now, like I said, we run, I, I like to run a lot of pistol. Uh, the formation that I really like to use is this uh, uh, split sc 
split slot formation. Like I said, you're going to see a lot of triple option. You're going to see a lot of, you know, misdirection and uh, just trying to get the ball out of the quarterback's hands as quickly as possible. Oh, this is not a good start. That's a loss of five on the first play. <laughs> not a great start there. See, and the reason that I'm doing this is primarily because I know that my receivers probably can't catch because of their overall ratings were pretty horrendous. So I, I don't expect my receivers to be able to actually catch the football consistently. You'll be able to see everything that I do, by the way. Every audible that I that I make, every uh, check down that I make, and hopefully... Wow, he actually hung on to that. I'll take that. Hopefully, the game doesn't freeze. We'll see. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. I won't be able to tell you until it actually happens. And like I said, I, I really just have to try to do everything that I can to hold on to the football. Now, you're probably going to sit here and, and you're going to watch this video and go, Tyler, why, why are you calling a screen on third and eight? Why are you calling this? Why are you calling that? You know, if there's ever a play where it doesn't look good and you go, Tyler, what what exactly are you trying here? Um, put it down in the comment section. Man, he is slow. We might get the first. First down. There we go. That's why we called the screen. I had a feeling they were going to over-pursue because my offensive line stinks, because my receivers can't really catch. That's why we ran the screen. But like I was saying, if there's any time where you go, Tyler, why are you running this play in this situation? Put it down in the comments, and we'll uh, we'll discuss. <laughs> I guess we'll go back and watch the film, as the coaches like to say. Really gonna try my best. My big, my two big concerns are giving them too much time with the football. That's priority number one, and priority number two is not fumbling, because I know that. Um, you know, when you're playing a team that's substantially better than you, your running backs are prone to fumble. Your receivers are prone to fumble a lot, too. And, again, you know, my offensive line is not good. I don't expect to get a lot of push. And it's kind of why we're, we're playing in this, you know, really conservative style of offense. So we're going to take a, a running back off the field. And... Put a tight end on the field maybe not in that formation there's a ton of formations in this clemson offense and i use this almost exclusively this clemson style offense there are a ton of formations that are super um just super weird with the way the guys are lined up it's a lot of offset a lot of h back um you know so if you see a tight end or a, oh wow thanks for the reminder of how to snap the ball I don't think we're going to pick this one up. Not quite. All right, well, that was not a very productive offensive series. That's what happens when you play conservative. Uh, but, again, we kind of have to play conservative. Wow, they went right down the field and scored. We kind of have to play conservative because this team is not very good. Uh, and like I said, I don't expect to win this game, but I also expect to at least hopefully keep it close. Seems like my quarterback can play a little bit. And I know that he was able to move. So maybe getting him outside the pocket is a, a play like that. We pick up, you know, 14, 15 yards. Yeah, I think moving the quarterback is going to be the play. This guy seems like he can, he can run a little bit. Um, and like I said, we're going to be recruiting quarterbacks who can move to kind of fit this offense, but... I think the problem's going to be in this game particularly is their defensive line is so much better than my offensive line that I don't know if running the ball is going to be effective. We may have to throw the ball. One thing you're going to see me never run is the X play right there, the inverted veer. It doesn't work in this game. Reads work, pitches work, a lot of things work in this game. The Veer does not work. Probably because it's outdated and 70,000 years old. There we go. Let's get out in some space. Wow, ran right into the blocker. That was that was foolish on my part. 
Yeah, so it seems to me getting the quarterback out in space is probably the best way to go. Probably run a lot of screens, a lot of quick stuff. Just going to continue to try to hold on to possession of the football as best we can. It's amazing how far you have to drop back. Wow, this running back is slow. He must be a power back because he is not very fast. But hey, six for six with our quarterback is is pretty good stuff. This this formation seems to be working. I love this too. I mean, this game is is so much better than any of the recent Maddens that they've put out. Like the things that you can do in this game that you can't do in Madden is just it's so it's substantial. How much better a game that is eight years old is than the current edition of Madden. All right. Don't want to pack it in just yet because I think that we still have some, some room to operate, but I also don't want to be taking unnecessary shots if I don't have to. I think that having 18 here, safety's dropping back. They're going to go too high safety. All right, I think we might actually be able to run the ball here. Um, it felt like we were going to be able to run the ball if my guard could have actually, you know, held his block. All right, now let's open it up a little bit. I think this spread flex is, um, yeah, it's a four receiver set. It's probably the best way to go. The problem is at this point, which is why I took the football to start the game, now being down seven, I can't kick field goals. Field goals don't do me any good. Um... The, the star linebacker is, nope, didn't want that. Yeah, actually, I do want that. That star linebacker, who I'm under the impression might be Miles Jack. Um, yeah, I don't want any part of that. That's why. That's why we move the running back across the formation. Give us some protection. We are tied in the second quarter with the 20th ranked team. That's not bad. By the way, I don't know if I showed you guys. I don't think I did. We're playing on the uh, All-American difficulty, which is the second hardest. I think there's a, a Heisman difficulty. Um, so if things start to seem like we're doing too well um, in this All-American difficulty, I will, um, I will change it up and go to the Heisman. I wasn't quite sure how playing, and it's been a while since I've played this game, so I wasn't quite sure how it would react to... Um, to having such a bad team so i figured that the heisman difficulty would be a little bit too much for us to start the to start the episode or to start the um the dynasty but we'll just continue to we'll just continue to chew clock if we can i think that that's probably the best option um you know what why don't we take a shot? <laughs> this might not be a good idea, but why don't we take a shot downfield? Um, I don't like that high safety. We might have to, to audible out of this. What do we change? Nope, that's not it. All right. Yep, that's what we're going to go with. Didn't like that high safety over the top because the, the first read, I know that it's not the highlighted first read, but on that play, the first read is the is the post, you know, the, the, the deep post, and that was just not... Not something that I was excited about throwing into, into that high safety. Go with the screen again. The screen's been working for us so far. Ah, uh, this one's not going to. The tackle's going to pull him down. Oh, what a move. What an ability to get four. He should have been pulled down five yards behind the line of scrimmage. This guy might be my leading receiver by the end of the season. I have like a thousand yards at the end of the year receiving and like 12 rushing oh both of my running backs are stars that's awesome we're good here man i know how to play i know i'm playing on a new uh i know i'm playing on a new account but i know how to play this game i promise all right, so the first uh, 
And I, again, I know that the first read in this play is supposed to be X, but for me, the first read is going to be O, coming across the formation, just because, nope, that wasn't it. Nope, I threw it too soon. Uh, the reason that it was O coming across the formation is, again, trying to get the ball out of my hand as quickly as possible. Now, here comes the problem. I'm not able to decide if I'm going to go for it or not because I'm not the coach. I'm only the offensive coordinator. So I have no ability to decide, uh, yeah, I'm going to go for it, or no, we're going to, we're going to punt here. Which kind of stinks. Need you to move. Need you to move. <laughs> he didn't go. I was hoping he would... He What he did at the very end was to cut up field. And I kind of needed him to cut up field. But he didn't do it on that particular play uh, until very, very late. How do they have four yards? What? <laughs> What is happening? Did they score? They must have scored a special teams touchdown. They must have returned the punt for a touchdown. Don't like this. Gonna throw into some traffic. That was a nice catch. Got the first down. Don't need to call a timeout. Thank you for reminding me. We're good. We've got plenty of time. Because we're not going to do anything foolish with the 61 overall offense. That would be a terrible decision. We are going to check him down to a wheel route. Get him out in the flat by himself. Okay. Now we're going to call a timeout. Yeah, uh, like I said, my guy didn't have glasses um, when I created him. Maybe he's the head coach, which would make sense because, I'm, like I said, I'm not the head coach. Um, so that would be probably why because I'm. that's not me. But I didn't think that I put glasses on my guy when I created him. All right, 36 seconds left in the half. An opportunity to maybe put some points on the board before halftime. Let's see, who's who we got? We got nobody. Got to, got to roll out. Got to go pick up the first. We're going to do it that way. Let's move. Let's move. Come on. Come on. We've got them backpedaling a little bit. Let's go. We're going to go deep curls down the, down the, uh, the right sideline. Assuming Drew can get back into the formation. Almost didn't want him to catch that. We got to move, though. Same play because I don't have time to, to audible out of it. I'm trying to save the timeout in case we need to kick the field goal. Get out of bounds. Get out of bounds. Get out of bounds. Get out of bounds. There we go. Should be in a decent enough position to kick the field goal. First down. Uh, I guess they're going to call for one more play, which means we kind of have to go deep. I mean, not deep, but deep for where we're at. I mean, we do have that timeout, which is good, but I don't trust a Mac. I don't trust college kickers, period. But I definitely don't trust a Mac kicker. But I guess we have to give them the opportunity to try because I don't have another option. Oh, he made it. That's fantastic. All right. So we'll head into halftime with a lead over the 20th ranked team in the country. That's fantastic. Now we'll see what happens when they actually have the opportunity to go right down the field. I guarantee you they score a touchdown here. But we'll see. Oh, no, they only got three. Okay, so they only got three, which means we have the opportunity to start to chew some clock, run this game down a little bit. Have it, Maybe we'll win this game 13-10. I don't trust it, but maybe we will. No, we're not going to do it when we're getting tackled at the, at the line of scrimmage we broke out of that for one yard this man has three carries for two yards now I know that there are, are people that will probably sit here and watch this and go Tyler you can't play this way you can't play conservatively it's going to come back to bite you we'll see spin move does not work with the quarterback safety was all over that I can't go I can't go no running back go five wide because the minute that I do that they're gonna blitz and my my line lineman will not hold up on the blitz what I do want to do is have him come across the formation like that and then O is gonna run a I think that's a drag yep got O running a drag square running the slant got to go to the short man down low there we go easy first down 
as we continue to just methodically march down the field. That's all we got to do is just keep picking up first downs slowly. All right, let's go back to our, uh, our normal formation, get the starter in the game. Starting running back, that is. I mean, listen, I I'm not going to complain about that. You go on the road and you're 10 of 14 with a 61 overall offense. I'm not going to complain about that whatsoever. That's a good run. Go off the left guard's hip, uh, in between the tackle and the guard, pick up nine. Pretty simple if you ask me. Now can we build on it? Because, again, we're going to continue to be very methodical. I'll take six, six yards at a time and then three, you know, and just kind of go back and forth between that. Hold on to the football. Don't fumble. There's five more. Seven's even better. Fear the Rue. This jacket says fear the Rue. All right, let's go into the – put a second running back in the game. We'll go triple option for a play. There we go. Get to the outside. Oh, you didn't block. I'm trying to figure out what my receiver's doing all the way downfield because it sure isn't blocking because if you would have blocked, he'd have sealed the edge off. We'd have probably gotten at least a first down out of that. But you didn't even remotely block. That was horrendous, actually. I feel like I almost want to go into max protection here. And I'm not quite sure how. Oh, there we go. Just did it. Got to get out of the pocket. I, I don't like square. I don't like square there. Uh, I'll throw it away. I, I didn't like the route that square was running. I felt that it was kind of behind the defender. He would have allowed the defender to pop right in front of him. Oh, wait. This is play action. I don't know if I want to go play action on third down like this. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Oh, we got the running back. He's going to run out of bounds. Oh, another particularly strong first down. That's awesome. All right, so what I've learned, other than the fact that I need to learn these guys' names, because it'll be much easier for me to say, hey, there's Osborne down the sideline, as opposed to, yeah, I threw it to Triangle. Uh, what I've learned from this team, Osborne's the quarterback, by the way. He's not going to throw it to himself down the sideline. What I've learned from this team is that uh, my running backs are my best receivers. In fact, my running backs are probably my best players. So we're just going to continue to use them. Both um, Johnson and Brink, we're going to use them pretty heavily. If you would have said to me that we were going to go into the fourth quarter tied at 10 with the 20th ranked team in the country... I would have been happy. I would have been so happy. Now we get to the point where those benchmarks moves, the goalpost changes a little bit. Now we need to win this game. Now losing this game 17-10 or whatever it might be, that doesn't do anything for me anymore. We have to win this game outright. All right, I want to get both. In fact, you know what? I was going to say I want to get both running backs moving out of the backfield. Let's go to the old trusty screen play. I like this setup. If this sit, this strong safety overcommits, I mean, they've got four guys in one spot. I need them all to overcommit. And uh, I don't think any of them did, and that's why the D-tackle brought my guy down in the backfield. Because now we're in a weird spot where the, the head coach who's making the decisions might call for a punt. Oh, no, he's going to let us go play. All right, that's I like that. I like that coach having a little bit of, uh, a little bit of faith in us. We will try to attack the middle of the field. Because at this point, if we throw the ball... You know what? Honestly, we actually may go down the sideline because if if we throw a pick... You know, if we throw a pick, we throw a pick. And you got to catch that, dude. You have to catch that ball. It hits you in the hands. That ball sets us up with a first down on like the 25-yard line. You have to catch that ball because they're going to go down the field and score a touchdown. Now we have to tie the game. This is the exact scenario in which I wanted to avoid... Was, from, was playing from behind. Because I don't, I don't trust any of my receivers. Got to throw that ball away. I don't trust any of my receivers to make a play downfield. The only players I trust are my two running backs. And in fact, we may, may almost have to go... 
I was gonna see if we could go to a two running back system or a two running back formation, but the only one we have is this one. I don't I don't really particularly like the, the passing plays out of this formation. And like I said, you know, if you'd have said we lose this game 17-10 at the beginning of the game, I'd have been pretty excited. But, you know, once you're once it's tied 10-10, there we go. There's a first down and more. Once it's tied 10-10 going into the fourth quarter, you gotta win the game. You can't you can't lose the game at that point. 17 of 23. I mean, that's good good completion percentage, but I need the I need the yards to go up. Hold on to the ball. Please don't fumble it. We're not in panic mode just yet. I think that we still have the ability. Uh, we actually probably still have the ability to run the football if I need to. Uh, don't particularly like the way that they're set up, but if my center and guard can get these two pinch D tackles, then it might be okay for a couple of yards. Uh, it's not necessarily a great play call there. Come on, Tyler, you got to be better than that. Because now we have to take a running back off the field in order to get a... See, we can't run a setup play there. Third, Our offense isn't strong enough to run play action on third down, especially if they blitz. It, it's just not going to work. You pick it up yourself. Oh, there we go. Go run for the first down. We're on their side of the the, uh, the field. 45 yards to go, plus territory. I think we still have plenty of time. Now, we can run the setup play. Still have 90 seconds. Only have to go 45 yards. Not worried about time just yet. Let's see if we can get a safety to come down. Nope, couldn't get a safety to come down into the box. Didn't mean to throw that ball there. That probably sh could have and should have been picked. I thought we might get a safety to come creep down into the box, and that was where we were going to go deep over top of them. But I don't, I don't think that, I don't think I have any receiver who's going to make a safety have to come, or I should say, I don't have any player that's going to make a safety have to come down into the box and make a play. Get the first down, because if we don't, we've got to go no huddle. Okay, thirty-four yards to go, a minute and nineteen. This is starting to get worrisome for me because we're getting into the point of the field where I can't make a mistake. Get out of bounds. I'll take the. I'd rather give up the yard and not have to call them and not have to use the timeout. We've got 25 yards to go, and the problem too is going to be if we give them the ball back, <laughs> they might go down the field and score. You gotta bounce off the tackle, man. We can't have that. Because now we do have to go no huddle. In order to hopefully no, I don't want to call the same play. We need to go no huddle in, in, in order to get a, a half a yard, an inch. No, don't go backwards. Alright, we got the two. In fact, you know what? Let's use one of the timeouts here. My guys are probably pretty tired. They're starting to run out of run out of gas a little bit. That was a really broken play that we got lucky enough to get two yards on and a fresh set of downs, but I don't want to mess around with it if I don't have to. All right, can we can we call a play here? Or are you just going to run my clock? See, and, and remember, friends, this is what I was talking about. There we go. This is what I was talking about with it being an old game. It is, uh, it, it's subject to some issues. The game itself is pretty good. Uh, it could be the system that's the problem. All right, so Roland is my first option here, I think. That's, he's, he's not going to be there. And we fumbled the ball. But the what is that? The guard picked it up? I, the guard picked that ball up and picked up two additional yards. That's incredible. All right, now we're starting to run out of time. we got to get going. That was a bad ball. I don't I, that that receiver never created any separation. I forced that entirely. All right, I think I got to put both running backs on the field. They're my best players. I think I have to. All right, let's send Downing deep. I don't need to learn how to stiff arm. We're gonna send Downing deep. I need Brink on. Actually, I want to use Brink on a, a wheel route. I think because the minute that they go defend somebody else, we're gonna go take the wheel route. Now, we've got, all right, we've got one play to get two yards. This is the game right here. We're going to go back to the exact same play with the exact same wheel route. 
Probably won't go to him, but we're going to go to the wheel route. We're going to have Downing run a fade. We're going to get sacked. We had no time. There was no time. Oh, what a bad way to end the, the first game of the dynasty. He got right around the guard. That's going to be the end of the game. He got right around the guard. <sighs> what a bad loss, man. That is a tough, tough loss to start the season. You know, and, and we, we played the way that I wanted to play. I mean, not 10 points, scoring 10 points wasn't the way that I wanted to play, but we played the way that we wanted to play with, you know, time of possession and things like that. And came down to the stretch where we needed to score on that one drive and not scoring, you know, that I can't say one play. One play doesn't, it, one play doesn't dictate a game. So I can't say it was that one dropped pass that changed the course of the game, but it didn't help. Well, and, and you know, the thing is it could be worse. We could be Ball State, who just lost to an FCS school. Um, so while this loss isn't great, I mean, a seven-point loss on the road to a 20th-ranked team in the country is not terrible. Winning is something that the Zips are not accustomed to. You will be. I promise you, you will be. But for now, we're going to wrap this thing up. We'll start next week's episode with some recruiting, and then we will uh, have our first home game in Akron where we take on uh, UL Lafayette. So, unfortunately, we don't get the win. We lose 17-10 to 10 on opening night. Uh, but I, I, a lot of really good things to take out of it. Defense played great. The running backs are good. The quarterback can play a little bit uh, as long as we don't take too many shots. It's going to be the receivers that are going to cost me, I think, down the stretch. But thanks so much for hanging out with us. If you liked what you saw, we're going to continue this dynasty. Hopefully, we get Akron on to the winning track. And again, the end goal is to be the head coach at Penn State University. So stick around for next week. We'll be back with week two against UL Lafayette. And just remember, don't share a brain cell. It's bad for your health.